Uh, this is something I made uh, a week ago, and it is a, uh, a cheap alarm uh, system from Home Depot that I've interfaced with a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino uh, so that it can send uh, email and SMS text messages uh, when the alarm is going off. Um, I've showed this to a few people and I've had a lot of questions about how it works, so I'm going to uh, take it back apart and show um, what it's doing and how it works. So this is the uh, the other side of the of the circuit board, and in the middle is the main brain of this thing. And um, the, basically, the intermediate goal here is to find a point in this board that has a voltage flowing through it when the alarm is going off, and only when it's going off. So there's a lot of points in here where there won't be any voltage normally, but uh, there will be voltage when the alarm's going off, but also under other conditions it has voltage too, like if the door is open in zone one, some of these points may have voltage running through them and also when the alarm's going off. So we want a point that only has voltage going through it when the alarm has actually been uh, set off. Uh, so uh, I got lucky on the, the first uh, thing I tapped off of uh, turned out to work for what I was looking for. Uh, so I looked at this for a while and uh, soldered on a, a wire to this thing mainly because uh, I wanted to listen to it with an oscilloscope and you need something for the uh, the probe which has like a little hook on it to hook onto so that we can watch what happens when we set the alarm off. Uh, and so I'm going to show what that actually looks like. But the, the main point is that this is a good spot uh, for the Arduino to be programmed to listen to and then react to accordingly. Uh, so I'm going to show how that all works. Okay, so let's watch um, what happens when we uh, set some stuff off. This isn't armed, uh, but I have uh, one of the wireless like window or door sensors that comes with it, and when I separate it, it should start beeping. Um, just for the sake of demonstration, I've, I tapped off of this um, zone 2 LED that this thing is um, programmed to. So this is an oscilloscope probe that is hooked to that and then to the um, the ground uh, field of this circuit board. So I'm going to watch what that looks like. Here's a cheap Chinese oscilloscope that uh, meet your best needs. <laughs> Some great lost in translation stuff there. Um, all right, let me make sure I can see what's going on here. Okay. It's hard, hard to see. Anyways, what it's saying here is that uh, the voltage that it's reading right now is 3.8 uh, volts. So when we set this off, you see it start to change. Actually, let me. I can increase the amount of time it's showing. So this is just, all this does is show you voltage over time. Let's do that. All right, now you should be able to see like a square looking shape. All right, so that's what happens when you would like open a door. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, when we attach to this part of the circuit, what we're looking for is for nothing to happen. So it's reading zero and nothing, zero. All right. So let's arm the alarm and then set it off. <clears throat> okay, so I have armed the alarm. Uh, the red LED for uh, arm is on. Uh, the, the probe is hooked to this little leg of the chip, and I'm going to separate these two, and the alarm's going to go off. But we're going to watch uh, what happens uh, in the oscilloscope. So what we're looking to have happen is when this goes off, obviously, we want to see it go from uh, 0 to 5, 0 to 5, 0 to 5. Um, and then I'll try to 
quickly turn it off. Here we go. Alright. It should go back to zero. There we go. So that's what we're looking for. So that is the point in the circuit that we're going to measure with the, um, with the Arduino. Alright, so here's a little sketch I made when I was about to put this thing together, and this is essentially what, what we're doing. So uh, there's this tap from the control unit, and uh, we have a comparator, which is a, uh, a circuit that basically you take a reference voltage, like a voltage of unknown value, and another um, voltage of an unknown value or a varying value. So in this case, it's going to vary between 0 and 5 volts um, on the alarm controller. And basically what it does is the output of the comparator will be 0 until this voltage is equal to or greater than the reference voltage. So basically the Arduino is going to read uh, in its analog 0 pen that there's 0 coming through until this voltage from the um, alarm controller is either equal to or greater than the reference voltage, which we're also drawing from the Arduino. So when that happens, uh, uh, the comparator shoots all the way up to the value of um, the supply voltage, which in this case is 5 volts. So this pin is going to start reading 0, 5, 0, 5, 0, 5 when the alarm goes off. Um, and this Arduino is programmed to just send out to serial um, through USB to the Raspberry Pi every half a second or so what value it's reading for this. Um, so it doesn't get it right on the 5 volts, but it gets it either rising or falling from 5 volts, which is enough to know that something's happening. Um, and that's basically what's going on. So here is a look at um, the Python program that the Raspberry Pi is going to run. Um, it uses, uh, the only non-standard library is uh, Pi Serial, um, and you can get that from just Googling. Um, that enables uh, serial, that handles serial communication between um, a, run, a Python program and a serial port on a computer. Um, so we have two functions in this program. One is um, send text, which is largely lifted from uh, some tutorial I found. Um, and basically it just uses these two websites to determine, um, well, basically for this one, all it's using is the second uh, URL, which is onlinetextmessage.com, which basically just lets you, via the internet, send an SMS text, uh, and it comes from a random address. And that's basically it. Um, the script I found has, a, has some functionality for determining the service provider, but since I know my service provider and my wife's, uh, I just hard-coded them. 41 is for AT&T and then the other provider. Um, and then we also have a, a function here for sending email. And um, basically what it comes down to is it just runs a while loop and when it reaches the condition where it has uh, uh, the alarms going on, um, it, uh, it waits a little while, and then if it, um, after a certain amount of time, if the alarm's still going off, it, uh, it starts sending email and texts. So um, I'm going to run this with uh, my computer instead of the Raspberry Pi, uh, just so we can watch it. Um, and then I will uh, hook the Raspberry Pi up, hook everything back up, hook it into the internet. I'm going to remote into it from this PC, and then we'll set the alarm off and we'll watch the whole thing happen, and we'll watch my phone get um, an email and a text message from the All right, let me try this again. The clock says it is 7.36. I'm going to hit run on this thing. Oscilloscope says nothing's happening. 
All right, I'm going to set the alarm. And now we're going to set it off. Here we go. New text message. And it says, the house alarm has been activated. Pretty cool.